iRock Radio, the world headquarters of Rockets. Mike Caroli with Teresa Dufour. How Hi are you? there. I am fantastic. Thank you for uh, having me here. Thanks for inviting us to this palace. This is pretty cool here. Well, this is where it all happens. We're right in the center of the News 8 studios here. We're in mm-hmm. front of our monitor wall. You can see the anchor desk. Kind of a desk. We don't do a lot of sitting here at News 8, <laughs> uh, but this is where it all happens. Now, why not sit? You know, because some sit, some stand. Is it is it uh, more alertness or something when you're absolutely yeah no i think we just like to be on our toes uh and you have good posture when you're standing you're Mm -hmm. more alert so we go with the standing route see we do similar things at irock some of the staff will stand when they do their show some Uh will sit the lazy ones like concert kid he'll sit (laughs) and uh, but stephen wayne's full of energy so he's standing and he's clapping and yeah some people have like medicine balls too that they sit on really yeah like to do an ab workout while you're working during the newscast yeah yeah, but see, that would cause a lot of bouncing, bouncing action. I guess. You have that would make you feel like you're on a ship <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this interview with Happy us. Happy to do it. We want to get to know you a little bit at iRock Radio, and, okay. and our Does listeners that... have, you know, they're like, we want you to go down there and talk to Teresa and see what she's all about. So that's oh. why we're here. Well, I'm honored. <laughs> but when we showed up, you said something that, that struck me, which I thought was cool. You're like, you were excited that a rock station was here. Yeah. So are you yeah, a I'm fan? Just a, I'm just, a, of course I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. Well, what uh, are your favorite bands? My favorite bands, um, you know, <laughs> well, let me tell you this. My mother mm-hmm. grew up in New Jersey, so we listened to Bruce Springsteen uh-huh. growing up all the time, right? She's from Asbury Park, so we heard Bruce our whole life. Mm-hmm. So. How about that, Bruce Springsteen? And he was just in Connecticut recently. He did something down in Mohegan Sun yeah, for the, the veterans. Vets That's Rock right. thing. How about he got pulled? He got stuck on the side of the road. Did you mm-hmm. hear the story on I his did. motorcycle? And uh, a group of guys rescued him. Imagine mm-hmm. you go and help some guy. And it's Bruce Springsteen. It's pretty wild. It and he, he actually, <laughs> the guys pulled over to help him. Yeah. And then while he waited for his friends to come and bail him out or whatever, he took these guys to the local bar and they had a few drinks for like oh, a half an hour or whatever. Bruce, why not? Not huh? bad. Not yeah, bad. So I. You know, when it comes to rock like that, the, the classics, mm-hmm. I suppose. Right. You don't play a lot of Britney Spears on your station. No. Do you? <laughs> Why are you a fan of Britney Spears? I did dance on stage with Britney Spears. You did? All right. True so story. how does that happen? How does that happen? My sister and I are in probably the second row at the Civic, not the Civic Center. We were at, in Hartford, mm-hmm. uh, right at the XL Center, and they just said, "Hey." I still call it the Civic Center. I do too, yeah, right? It's, it's not <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're like, uh, do you guys like Britney? We're like, obviously, we're here. Well, duh. And they're like, well, do you want to dance on stage with her? And we're like, absolutely. <laughs> so I don't even remember what song it was. Something Let It Go. Not Let It Go, but it was a, a classic. And they just pulled us up on stage. We did. We danced. But her abs airbrushed. What? Yeah. Really? give out Britney secrets, but her abs were airbrushed. You heard it first right here on mm. iRock Radio. <laughs> That's it fun. Yeah. So... <laughs> that's that like I don't even know what to say to that. That's really kind of strange. Yeah. I guess it's all about showbiz and appearance sake. Like on and the jumbotron, I mean it looked probably looked great. Sure. I just, not too many people were on stage with her, I guess. So tell us a little bit more about you. Like so where are you from? You from Connecticut? Yeah. I'm from Connecticut. I've lived here my entire life. Um, grew up in Middlebury. Mm-hmm. I live there now with my husband and my son. I went to University of Connecticut stores, uh, studied journalism. That's where I got my TV bug. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, well, what made you want to get into television? You know, I always uh, was a little bit of a ham. Mm-hmm. I always liked <laughs> telling the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just as a little kid, I was always I would always walk around with a pen and paper, pretending I was a reporter, just interviewing mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And you know, I learned in elementary school I had a problem with talking. I just constantly <laughs> talked. So I figured I might as well put it to good use. <laughs> and it makes an interview like this, for me, easy. I just <laughs> ask you something and you just yeah, go. Just Why not? Just wind her up and she doesn't stop. Well, that's good, though. But, yeah, I just always wanted to, to be out there. And and when it comes to traffic, I feel like so everyone commutes in the morning. Mm-hmm. So they need to know how to get there and need to know the areas to avoid. I mean, some people don't take it seriously, but it's so important. Like the weather mm-hmm. and the traffic, that's what people need in the morning to get their day started. Traffic is uh, an ever-changing news story. Isn't it? It is. And that's why we I don't use a teleprompter. Mm-hmm. I don't write a script because it changes within the five minutes. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm on probably every five to six minutes, and mm-hmm. it's something new each time. So you I used to do traffic reporting. Come on, give me a little. Go ahead. I don't know. There are delays right now in Waterbury. Tell me about that. It was a long time. In Waterbury, there's nothing in Waterbury. Okay, you're going to slow down a little bit coming uh, route south. uh, 
You're going to slow down a little bit. Route 8 South, as you head into the uh, interchange with uh, I-84, you want to take uh, exit 34 off to Watertown, where Animus Prime lives. I don't know. I don't know. That was fantastic. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Yeah, no, not you really. You could do it if you needed to. I used to do it here in New Haven, as a matter of fact. Wow, now, were you in the air at all? Yes. I would drive from my home in Winstead to New Haven every morning, oh, and I would drive to Tweed, wow. yeah, sure. and I'd get in a two-seater plane. Uh -huh. And we'd fly around New Haven. We'd look at, uh, you know, 95, 91, yeah. whatever else is down here. 34. Uh, 34, 5 and 15, all that stuff. Yeah. And I'd report the traffics to area radio stations yeah. from the airplane. And I hated it. Wow. <laughs> it's not. Though. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I'm impressed. I was Mike Lapatino's uh, traffic reporter Mike way back. Mike Lapatino is not always nice to me. Well, he needs to change that. He's <laughs> supposed to be everybody's pal. Right now. Your old pal Lappy is not so uh, accurate, not my huh? Old pal. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Mike. We're buddies. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I did that many years ago. I did it just to kind of get started in broadcasting. I wanted to work at a rock station, so yeah. it worked well, out for you me. Have, yeah. You've you uh, made your dream come true, I huh? did, I did. That's great. I always thought traffic was going to be a temporary thing for me also. Mm -hmm. I was kind of just filling in over at Channel 3, and uh, someone said, hey, can you just do this for a week for us? And it turned out that I had a nice rapport with the weatherman that was over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're talking 11 years ago mm -hmm. at this point, but uh, it stuck, and what's I your, like it. <laughs> what's your favorite part of the job, though? Um... Be there are times that uh, you don't have a lot of time to prepare the traffic, mm -hmm. especially if you have 15 seconds and, oh, there's an accident that just pops up. you got to get it out to, to the viewers and listeners quickly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're winging it, and I think that's the beauty be behind it. I think that's the fun behind it. I don't always know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> I just hope it's coherent most of the time. But you have a radio background, correct? I do. That's uh, where, where we started. I worked... Uh, uh, years ago, Metro Networks, Westward mm -hmm. One in mm -hmm. Hartford, and I used to do news updates for uh, a number of stations and even dap it a little bit with traffic then. But radio is great. It's mm -hmm. so much fun. You could be yourself because you kind of forget that there's so many people listening. Sure. Yeah. You don't have to get all dolled up. Nope. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but I think being in radio prior to television helps your ad lib skills and all that kind of oh, stuff as well, don't you? Absolutely, because you have to be on your toes uh, when you're when you're doing radio and you can't rely on a script always and right same thing with traffic so it was a it was a great background so what i want to do next i want to do a feature we call 60 seconds with I'm and I, i'm nervous yeah are you should i be nervous no <laughs> no you're gonna be great okay we're gonna take 60 seconds i'm gonna ask you as many questions as i can in that time okay answer them as quickly as possible got it all random stuff and we'll see what happens all right very good. good i'm in more with Teresa dufour on irock radio the world headquarters of rock